I differed with a couple of the miners you didn't like, like Silver Corp and Heckler. But okay. Well, I won't buy anything in China. They may be shooting at us next week. <laughs> okay, Ken, now that was one part of the question. What's the other? All right, the other one is um, regarding to buying um, uh, into mining stocks or investing in the mining stocks, would it make more sense to buy after the whole market crashes? Because I thought if the market crashes, it's going to bring down the price of those mining stocks, too. So wouldn't it make more sense to invest in gold and silver bullion? And when the whole market crashes, then you buy into your selected uh, uh, mining stocks? Well, uh, historically, gold and silver stocks have always been the antithesis of the general market and uh, currencies. Uh, the only exception to that was in October of 1968, for a short period of time, the gold stocks went down between October and February, and then they turned around and went right back up again. The other time that it happened was two years ago when hedge funds were deleveraging and they finished doing that. And that's what caused gold stocks to go down when the market went down. So the uh, impetus for gold shares, silver shares, to go down is not there. And I expect they will perform their traditional role, just like gold and silver does, of being a safe haven, a place of wealth protection, a place to be when there's high inflation, and I think they will continue to do that. So your uh, your purpose here is stay in dollars until the market falls, and maybe the gold and silvers might go down with the market and then buy them. I don't think so. Well, and let me ask you this, Ken, um, and refer back two callers ago to Rod in Indiana. Uh, if you're thinking about mining stocks and you're going to wait for them to move in whatever attractive manner for you to jump into it, if you've got money right now to invest into something, uh, would it not be your first choice for gold and silver? Because you know that's going to go up. The, the yeah, un- see, and that's, that's really that's where I'm at today is, uh-huh. is that uh, I am very conservative and I, I, I have it all in, uh, in bullion. Right. And... Uh, and uh, yet, when you know when the market crashes, um, you you want to take advantage of um, uh, of that, and that's when I thought, well, that would be the time to buy the uh, the mining shares. Well, it, it, well, it, the the explanation I gave earlier was that between seventy eight and eighty one, the shares went up forty times what bullion went up. Now, whether that'll happen again or not, I don't know. But I usually say to people. I think it's a safe assumption that the possibility of quality and otherwise gold and silver shares going up five times more than bullion is a pretty good shot. Well, that happened this year, Bob. I mean, bottom mm-hmm. line is year to date gold is up uh, a little over 20 percent. About 25, 26 percent, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I could rattle off a whole bunch of miners that are up 200% plus for the year. Well, and here. And so, you know, that's yeah. where the leverage is, but the risk is there as well. Oh, yes. And again, we come oh, back yes. to suitability. And if you're very conservative, you stay in bullion. Don't get out. Don't do anything else. Just to satisfy your curiosity, and we all, all uh, we only cheer for the horses we bet on. I've never seen anybody at a racetrack cheering for somebody else's horse. Yeah, Ken, if you have anything left over, uh, well, then play around with it to satisfy your curiosity. But if you're, if you're a conservative kind of guy, I'd much rather be putting my money into something in an insurance policy that I know it's going to pay the dividend. Yes, yes. Thank you, John. Right. Well, my final question is this. Um, um, is the U.S. government offering small business loans to Indian and Chinese nationals uh, to start up businesses in the United States as a concession for holding Federal Reserve notes? I have heard nothing to that effect. But it sounds like a good plan. <laughs> well, well, if you're international. Well, you're in Austin. Well, just I mean, they, they the illustration of people owning um, small businesses are, are Indian and Chinese, and 
Well, and, and, and look at the tax breaks they get. It's an unfair advantage, well, uh, they a competitive get preferential advantage. Preferential treatment exactly. because they are a minority. Exactly. They've been classified as being refugees, or uh, if you're in a country that's having economic strife like we're not, they get special dispensation and special discount. Unfair, women are, the first, unfair women are the first on the pecking order of small business loans. If you're a single woman, uh, you're right up there. Um, and then if you're a single black woman, you're up there. Oh, yes. But I don't think Ken fits if into these categories. If you're a black woman that's got a handicap, you're really up there. <laughs> <laughs> With a hair lip, let's let's throw that one in there too. Anyway, Ken, uh, does that answer your question, sir? It does very well, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Robbie. Okay, not a problem. You're welcome. Thank, thanks for your call. By the way, I wanted to mention uh, uh, to Jim uh, that called in. Uh, I was looking at uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, in this past year alone, sixty-one thousand homes they were foreclosed on. Commercial mortgages defaults are still significantly lower, and they're comparing it. I guess they're looking for the new normal. Uh, comparing it to the last big real estate market blowout, and that was in the late 80s, early 90s. We all remember that one. But if you take a look at this, uh, apartments, office, retail, industrial, uh, the change in foreclosures up 16% in apartment buildings, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, offices up 121%, retail 90%, industrial 10%, land foreclosures, they're taking back the land, 71%. Um, so it... Yeah, that's the, why consumer confidence jumped today. Yeah, yeah, why, did, yeah why, did it, why did it jump? Unbelievable. Is, is this not... I mean, tell me a story of Hansel and Gretel or something. Tell me a good Well, fairy you know, tale. in Europe, the, the, the governments are doing the same thing. Uh, Italy today, uh, which is a basket case, they had an increase in, 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 in consumer confidence, the highest in 18 years, the jump. I mean, that's incredible. That can't be true. I mean, if you're going to have a, tell a lie, make it believable. And the same thing's going all over Europe. I mean, you you see that because you guys get the international forecaster and read the European section. Wait till you read it tomorrow. It's like Bar City. By the way, uh, yeah, uh, sales forecast for the auto industry in this country slightly better next year over 09. Yeah, that's because they're discounting uh, Pontiacs by 46%. I was just, you must be, are you, is <laughs> this there a guy knows this? everything, is, doesn't is, he, John? Is there a camera in this office? You're looking over my shoulder because hey, I'm listen, literally... Hey, listen, I want to read you something I just wrote. Uh, Bloomberg issued uh, an affiliate uh, report of MasterCard that holiday sales were estimated to be up 3.6% versus last year. But after adjusting for the extra day between Thanksgiving and Christmas this year, the implied sales would be up 1% versus a year earlier. <laughs> it just shows you they lie over and over and over again. Well, that's the new normal. They lie. So we can get used to that. By the way, Robbie, uh, yeah, I was going to say if you want a screaming deal on a Pontiac, which, by the way, if you buy one of these things, they still... General Motors, it still carries a warranty, and they still have to service it. But if you want a screaming deal on a Pontiac GTO, which I've always wanted, but now I don't even have the money to buy even at 46 or 50% discount. But somebody that's looking for a new car, yeah, there's the time to buy, either a Saturn or uh, General they, Motors. I heard they're going for like $6,900 out of the door. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Well, it's, it's the year end closing sale. And this is Literally. how the car sales are going to go up. I mean, what cockamamie. <laughs> You're right, Bob. You are absolutely right. It is, it is unbelievable. And, and you know, it's okay, but the, the point is they're going to lose money in every one of them that they sell. Well, they, they have already got, they've already lost their money. The inventory is sitting there. What are they to do with it? They've got to blow it out. They've got to get it out the door because it's just sitting there collecting dust. Oh, and by the way, they're, they're, the dealers are still paying money on these things because they don't own them. Okay, so, yeah, uh, look for your uh, favorite Saturn dealer, which which I, I this is something that they're divi divesting themselves from. Um, uh, which is it? Is it uh, 
Ford that's getting rid of Saab and General Motors that's getting rid of Volvo. I think they're going to sell Volvo to the Chinese, <laughs> which is going to be rather fascinating. But they're starting to divest themselves and drop back to their core businesses. They're not going to leave go of the international GM and Ford plants that they have their own brand on. Uh, but I was waiting for this. I, I watched this happen in the 80s and the 90s. Oh, we're, we're big-time rollers here. We're going to take on more stuff that we don't understand, and we're going to take good products, and we're going to ruin them and put the Ford and GM stamp. Let me be kinder. Uh, the GM stamp on it. Ford is coming up in quality. At any rate, back to the phones here. We've got callers waiting. Isaac in Colorado. Hello, Isaac. 